Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering with another important tip of the day. How many of you guys have an addition added to your house? Now, what we have here, this is the house and this is the addition. Now, what brought on this nightmare for the homeowners? Well, where the addition is, it's a separate foundation and separated and so if you kind of look down there if you could video that little piece down there now that's actually kind of normal when you do a house like say the house is 90 years old and the addition is 30 years old you'll get different movement as um, as it rains you'll get the uh, expansion and constriction and what does that mean well each foundation is moving a little bit so Here's the important thing, guys. I usually tell everybody, if you get some hairline cracks, it's superficial. It's not such a big deal. It doesn't mean diddly squat. You get cracks, they're normal. But if you get a crack where your addition is and, say, the house is, that's important. Or if you get a crack where the chimney goes up the wall on the sides, that's important. If you do get cracks there, guys, save yourself the expense and notice it and caulk it. They got this fancy uh, word for caulking. It's more flex. <laughs> and with double X, Y. It's like people when they spell boys, they say instead of B-O-Y, it's, they got to be cute and put B-O-Y-Z. Anyway, this particular caulking, say if the house is moving. And people always tell me, they say, well, can you fill that with stucco? I say, yeah, I can fill it with stucco. But if I do that, as soon as this happens again, which will be next spring, the stucco will pop right out. This will expand and constrain contract with the house so this will last uh, about 10-15 years and it won't crack out and that way you give some expansion but what happens if you don't <laughs> put the caulking in here when you get that crack by the chimney or say your addition water will go in and every season more water will go in it'll hit the wood it'll finally break the paper and hit the wood and then the wood expands and when that wood expands what happens well, you get rot, mildew, and, and everything else like that. And so that mildew or rot expands. And every season, it gets worse and worse. So if you notice it, guys, that's the time to put caulking in it. And I recommend this, this Morflex or any other sand, caulking with sand in it because it matches your finish. You see this? This is sandy. Real sandy. Um, <laughs> what I told these guys is, man, put your belly band on and caulk that and when you caulk that don't use that don't use that more flex use this this is a it's a polyurethane caulking what does that mean it means it's a good caulking it's this is an adhesive sealant and this is what i use when i do lathing and since they didn't um didn't caulk this one piece right here we got to fuse it uh i like to use that terminology we fuse the metal to the paper that way no water can or when it rains and we're at the southwest rain's going to come down this way it won't go through their light fixture and get inside and going back of the wood that's really important guys now what i suggest using this caulking for your cracks no because even though it's the best polyurethane sold that i'm aware of i've been using it like 40 years you can't work with it you can't if, say if you put it on your house and you're caulking cracks like the caulking I just showed you, you can use your hand and, and just fill that in. But this caulking, uh-uh, <laughs> no way. You ain't using your hands for this stuff because you get this on you, it never comes off. But that's why it's such an excellent adhesive caulking. Uh, and it's, it's great for fixtures. Anyway, what I told these guys is go ahead. Uh, they, they laughed at themselves. <laughs> that's another thing I'll get back to that because there's a funny thing about that they they watched the videos and so they laughed it um, I told him I said I'll tell you what man I'll put an expansion joint right where the two meet this way when the foundations settle differently uh, it won't hairline again or can it sure it can but it's less likely to with an expansion joint now I'm just putting this level here to make sure it's level because I don't want to just use my eyeball on it while I'm on that subject now <laughs> this is getting kind of boring but um, 
they've already researched expansion joints. If you put nails in it, or furry nails, the, they researched this in LA a few, bunch of years ago for earthquakes to see which one is better. Staples are. The nail heads blow off, so we use staples on this. And plus, this expansion joint is a half inch. Why? Because the wire is self furred So I got to put a half inch. If I put a one inch, one inch would go on the wall itself. Then you wire up to that. But this is a better way. You, you wire first, then you put your expansion on it. A uh, whole bunch of videos on that stuff as far as why. Anyhow, I'm going to show you something, guys. This was kind of cute. <laughs> when I got here, the, they had it all done with this 20 gauge wire. Can you use 20 gauge wire for stucco? No, 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 no. Can you use it for tile? Yeah. Can you use it for hen houses? Like, that's why they call it chicken wire because we had chickens and I used it for a hen house. Uh, it's 20 gauge, it's too light. So you can't get a fur, meaning right now what we have done is I put this 17 gauge wire right over their 20 to give me the fur. Otherwise my stucco goes right on top of this thin wire. It doesn't go behind it. What we want is we want to go behind it 3 8 and on top 3 8 So that gives you your basically 7 8 uh, with a color coat. That's 7 8 but that's technical stuff. Uh, I don't want to get sidetracked. Anyway, the stucco when we start applying is going to go under and over and that gives the best fur. That means when, say, five, ten years from now, you won't see a whole bunch of cracks. If you guys use this, and I see guys buy this all the time, stucco guys, I'm at the material yard, and it's like, I say, dude, what you going to do with that? Because I see they got stucco, and we're going to laugh at the house. <laughs> I say, well, you got insurance? You're going to need that, man, because in five years, that house is going to crack like an egg, man. Don't do that. Anyway, I'm going to explain one more, one more thing about this cracking down there, because a lot of people say, man, it can't be that severe. Yes, it is. Where we did a theater in Black Hawk. This was 35 years ago. We did a theater in Black Hawk. I was just a, working for the uh, a company. And so when we did this theater, that was 35 years ago. And about five years ago, the, somebody else called me up and I said, Kirk, um, it looks like we got icicles hanging out on the theater. And I said, I know that theater. We did it. And I said, those are not icicles. That's all the stucco that fell. And over the last 35 years, the ground has, when it got rain, it expanded. Then when drier conditions returned, it shrunk. So that's a tractor. And that's why you're three feet off the ground. Yeah, that ground settled three feet. And so it looked real weird with, on one side with icicles coming out. So we just went and broke them off and restuckled the bottom. That's the transition and that's what could happen with settling, guys. A lot of people don't recognize that. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started. My brother Lou is mixing up some stucco. We're, we'll show you too if you want to watch how we apply this. All right, guys, the fun part. Now, personally, I'd rather do this any day than laugh. And Jay had a good point a minute ago. He said, well, they don't know that this job passed inspection. I'll tell you one thing about inspectors, guys. If you're s still watching this, inspectors, they got a lot to do. They have to know 25 trades, at least plumbing, you name it. They got to know it all. So the fact that they didn't catch this little glitch that it's 20 gauge wire, is not a big deal because um, it looked pretty. It was all fur nailed off and it was pretty looking. So not everybody can catch that. In fact, I think the best inspectors are retired GCs, general contractors. They know a whole lot about everything. Me, I just know about stucco. I don't know plumbing, electrical. Don't want to know. So. The fact that you can pass an inspection with 20 gauge, not a big deal. So anyway, guys, as I'm doing this, I got my brother, Lou, he's mixing me up some mud. And Jay's on the camera filming this. If, it, if he wasn't filming, he'd be right next to me applying this. Thought I'd mention something too, guys, because it's, well, you know, I always say, I love it when I can get harmony on a job. Everybody's working together and having a good time. Um, we don't always have that, guys. 
All right, guys, camera battery died. I was waiting for my brother Lou to load us up because I, I wanted to explain something. Now, I was talking about this, this trial music. It's a 20 inch. The Hawk is 14 by 14. That's the biggest Hawk they sell. If they made a 20 by 20, I'd be using it. But <laughs> as I was saying, we love it when we get harmony on a job. What's that mean? That means everybody's getting along. You don't have to tell anybody to do anything because they already did it. They know what their job is. Now that is perfect. When someone knows what their job is and they do it without you telling them or getting mad in order for them to do it, that's just, that works for us. While my brother Lou is getting some more mud, I figured I'd stick this in. We are on a job about three weeks ago. Woo, Lou was mad. There was no harmony. There was only profanity on that job. And I didn't blame Lou one bit. And I'll tell you why. I had one of my a uh, good buddy of mine, a plaster. And man, this guy can plaster. But he's using the wrong trowel. And toward the end of the day, I finally said, dude, you know, before you leave, <laughs> you're going to be like us, and you're going to help clean up. I never asked my guys to do anything I wouldn't do myself. If there's a roof needs to be done, I wouldn't say, hey, you go up there because I'm afraid. I go do it too. So when we're done with the job, I like everybody to leave if I have guys usually it's me jay and lou but if i have other guys it's like all of us leave together i don't want to see one person leaving before that just destroys harmony anyway the job we we're doing lou's like screaming at the guy and he's using a little trowel this is the littlest one i have and this is a 14 so it won't prove my point this little bitty avery's little trowel will prove my point so he's using it so what he's doing is he's putting mud on the wall. So he's filling up his trowel. And as he do it, watch this. You see all that squeezing off? He has a 12 inch trowel. And he's doing this all day. And at the end of the day, man, I can't even drop mud if I try. I'm trying to drop, squeeze the excess mud all over the place so it dries or falls. Anyway, we had to pick up three and a half wheelbarrows of mud. And now, See, if you fill a trowel up right here and you squeeze this, uh, what happened is the excess from the sides are going to fall off. Now, this dude, I'm not going to mention names, but he kept doing that. And so at the end of the day, I said, man, you're going to help us clean up. But he would have anyway. And, and we had three, four wheelbarrows we had to take home with us because of all the stuff falling off. Anyway, guys, I recommend you use a bigger trowel than your hawk. That's the moral to that story because the bigger hawk, you can put a lot on here. So, anyway, I'm waiting for Lou to bring me up some more mud and I'm gonna keep doing this. Uh, this I can do all day and do do this all day because it's fun. All right, guys, we had to hustle. I told Jay, get off the camera, come help me because it was starting to set up on us. Uh, I always dictate how much accelerators to put in, even if we're using an accelerated pro uh, product. What's that mean? You can do both coats. Most people don't realize if you're going to do both coats, guys, the paper Depends. The paper's going to suck up the moisture from the first coat. The sun's directly on us where this morning it was so cold and right now it's starting to warm up finally. Cool. I love the heat. So what we're doing now is I'm Darby in this. This is not true and plumb this wall, but still I need to gauge where I'm going with this. So this rod, Darby, straight edge, call it what you want. It's technically a Darby. It will get me chew and plumb so I can see where, where I need to continue add mud. And what I do is I'm just straightening the top out with this. Okay, I want it fat and ugly, fat and ugly so I could dictate where I want all this mud. If I have excess mud, I just drop it down there or someplace where I see it's hollow. That's one of the hardest things or most difficult for uh, new guys to understand 
And that is, when do you put your next coat on? Well, as I'm applying this, I'm thinking, oh crap, it's starting to get hard. So that's when I say, all right, uh, Jay, come give me a hand and let's hustle because we have a mixer full. And that mixer full, I don't want to lose the mixer. We've not lost one yet in all the years we've been doing this. And this job is definitely not going to be our first. So this is on. And the fact that I use the Darby, you call it straight edge, to make it true and plumb, I look at this and I think, wow, that's wavy. I'll get that when I trial it next. So right now, uh, Jason and I are going to put that camera down and we are going to finish out all the mud because it's starting to get stiff and I don't want to lose it. Anytime you see me sweating, that doesn't mean I'm tired. It means I'm hustling. I'm nervous. I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm not going to lose that mixer full. All right, guys, we had to hustle because I was trying to talk to the cement. I said, slow down. Guess what? Stucco doesn't care. It doesn't wait for nobody to set up your arse, man. You guys want to try to show accelerated stucco and then add more to it? Then you pay the price. So what we're doing here is hustling because it's, it started setting on us. And what I like to do, guys, is you've heard me say the expression, fat and ugly. So we put it on fat and ugly because if it's on fat and ugly, then I can derby it and get the mud where I need and take some excess from here and put it here. It's kind of like that old saying, Rob Peter to pay Paul. So, and I'll tell you guys one other thing. The only time I need a little itty bitty trial or a 12 or a 14 is if I'm looking for an expansion joint and I'm gonna cut it, but usually I'll have a margin trial for that. Anyway, um, we have cotton. We got caught up. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of what we did up, up there because this stucco didn't want to wait. Now see that pole right there? Put it here. Now take it sideways and put that fat right in there. Put that fat in there. Okay. And the last thing anybody wants to do, this derby right here has got serrated edges. Why are those serrated edges like a tomato knife? The serrated edges are to allow the stucco to breathe. <laughs> People say, what's that mean, man? How's stucco breathing? I'll tell you how. That puts millions and of air holes in this, and then the air, the oxygen, everything, it sets it fast. However, I've got derbies in the truck, too, that don't have the ridges or the, uh, the, the ridges here. They're not serrated. They're just smooth because what we're doing now is we got to look at the finish. Okay, uh, this finishes. Well, you can put it up. You want to come all the way over here? Okay, this finishes humpty, bumpty, but you don't see no Darby lines. Darby lines are these little guys here. See those little grooves? I come across a lot of jobs and people say, what's this, Kirk? Not my jobs. I'll say that somebody left the Darby lines in. So because we're doing this, Wiggly finish, it's wavy. It's, uh, well, you can call it old school, old world. We take a trial now, and this is how I match that. First, I gotta get my edge. I'm going right next to you. Okay, now I take this trial, and I gotta get these Darby lines out. The Darby lines just saw, as a guide, for how much mud do I gotta put on there? Now this guy here, just getting those Darby lines out, because I can't leave a whole bunch of Darby lines on this and that this expansion. I just cover it up. That's okay. I'll find it I can see where it is right there cover it up get these Let's see get all the Darby lines out would have been better if I would have just used a uh, a Smooth Darby with no serrated teeth not really because I've got I would have to make a true and plumb with that and because this wall is so wavy, I'd still have to do exactly what I'm doing here. So I use a serrated one just so I could open it. So I can judge a little bit better. That's another indication of how much time I got. And I want as much time as I need. And again, I tell Lou how much uh, accelerators to add to this already accelerated material. And boom, 
I'm stuck with it. Then I have to live with that. And if I can't make it, we lose a wall. Have we lost any? Once or twice. Okay, now this got sand coming out. And here's something, guys. I got to match this finish. I can't, if it's too sandy, okay, if I do this, I'm bringing out the sand. Okay, if I do that and I just sand the whole thing. Now this wall, when they paint that, it's not going to look like this. It's not going to have all the hills and bumps and it's going to be way too grainy. What I'm trying to leave these guys is something that when they put primer and a paint matches what they already have. So we can't go too crazy and bring out too much sand. So here's what, that's what that part's already done up top. So I normally, when it's this wet, I'll take it upward. All I'm doing is putting some upward pieces. And if I go down, what happens? I just put this on. It's like, how thick is it? Way thick, guys. This is way thick. That's how thick it is, and that's how loose it is. So I don't want to pull down at all. I want to go up, uptown. So we want to go up, and then we want to still go up. If it was turning colors, meaning light gray, if it starts to turn light gray, that means it's getting hard, and you don't have the luxury to do a lot of stuff. Anyway, we're going to finish this off. We'll show you the end result because... Uh, we're still hustling and we're make it look like we're not hustling but in the back of our mind we're thinking move 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 all right guys we are there i'll show you some tips too like this expansion joint homeowner said hey you buried it i said no man it's just hiding now we take a margin trial and if we go straight down which i generally do that's cool but you will have a lip and that lip means i'm going to take it this way and get all that stuff off this way and get all that stuff off now we come back one more time and get it deep so we kind of make a v right there a v here then down the center and gets all that stuff out because if it's full of cement what kind of expansion joint would that be i'll show you uh another thing too guys on these edges here these are the kind of critical things how do you get that edge right if you're not sure take your trial and let it let it hang over so you watch this shave it shave it get your transition right so it's not a big bump right there then float it right back in and lastly I'll tell you, you might say what kind of material are we using Guys, we don't usually go to Home Depot for our materials. We go to the material yard for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, we go to West Side in Oakland or wherever there's a West Side or what other handy dandy plastering yard. So some of the materials we mentioned, if you're looking for them, Google plastering yards near me and you could find those products. What is this product? This is BIM I 690 with fibers and it has accelerators in it. And you put the whole bag in there, you mix the whole bags, but you don't over mix. Uh, you mix three to five minutes with all the accelerated products. What happens if you mix more than five minutes? Mixer will explode. I'm kidding, guys. Uh, if you mix it over five minutes, you compromise the strength of the material. So Lou knows what the heck he's doing. He's been doing this forever. So he's mixing three to five minutes. And since we ain't done in three to five minutes, what he does is he turns the blades off. It could sit in the mixer and then you turn those blades off so it's not spinning. Otherwise, you compromise the material. Uh, as a rule, too, guys, when we, we do uh, materials like this, in case a lot of you guys ask me, so I might as well explain it right here. Say, say if we get uh, Quickcrete um, or Eisenwall or a lot of the premium cements, we add three times as much sand as we do the cement and then that mixer over there you say we drag our own mixer we drag we got the truck so we mix whatever c cement we're using this is bmi we don't mix no sand with this this is everything here it's got the sand it's got the fibers it's got everything so we don't add sand to this but as a rule if you guys go to home depot you can buy say rapid set stucco rapid set stucco it's got heavy sand in it it's real heavy uh kind of like this right here well it's real heavy, like like this. If you say, well, I don't want real heavy, I want fine, then buy Green Core. Now, that has a real fine sand in it, and both of those products are same-day materials. So 
you mix in a bucket if you're doing a little patch. You mix three to five minutes, boom, you get it, you apply it, you're done with it. Anyhow, I thought I'd point uh, some of the products we use because we don't use the Home Depot products and only because we add our own sand and it's way too difficult to buy the cement there and then buy the sand. So you guys who just want to uh, make your life easy because you're doing patches around windows or doors and things, you can buy those same day products. All you do is add water, mix it in a bucket and apply it. Anyway, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching, and as usual, see you guys on the next one. Hi, everybody. We reached the end of another video, which means I get to do the fun part. I get to say thank you all for watching. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making content for you. And as always, if you're looking to purchase any of the tools or materials you see us use in these videos, you can usually find those at your local plastering yard. Or if you'd like to help support us in the process, you can buy them from our website, our Amazon affiliate links, and we'll make a little dough in the process there. More importantly, I get to introduce all you fine folks to the newest member of the Giordano Plastering Clan. This is my lovely baby Avery, and of course my beautiful partner Sarah. And as you can see, we've already picked out Avery's first trowel, so when they get a little older, they can come to the job site and learn from their dad and my dad, the plaster master, just like I got to. <laughs> as usual, we thank all you folks for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Bye.